Up next on the forum stage, hip hop panel and performances celebrating Wild Style, the first hip hop motion picture with Tony Tone. Oh yeah, you heard that right. Hey everybody, my name is Brendan. I'm the marketing manager of Verso Studios uh, in a festival that has been amazing over five days. Chuck D, Lemon Twigs, the fashion panel that was just here. I don't like to play favorites, but this hip hop, these hip hop events we've been doing, thanks to so many in the community, have been so amazing, and it just ends this festival on a, the highest note possible because hip hop is a celebration of all music. So I'm here to welcome Rodney C and Tony Tone. Get up here, guys. You want to use these mics, guys? I'll put this one back by the DJ. One, two. All right, so Rodney already hit me with the joke, age before beauty and all that mess. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm the oldest. I'm the original DJ Tony Tone, legendary Cold Crush Brothers from the Boogie Down Bronx. And my partner to the left of the stage, introduce yourself, sir. Well, my name is Rodney Stone, professionally known as Rodney C., and I'm one half of the original Double Trouble featured in this movie, Wild Style, that y'all about to see. Now, the movie Wild Style, we started shooting it in 1980? We started in 81. The first release was in 82, and then the original was in 83. So, it took us to Japan in 83. Um, we have a couple of my brothers here that was in, also in the movie with us. Um, I'm gonna start off with Grandmaster Cass of the legendary Cold Crush Brothers. Could you please come on up? We're Grand old, Master. so it takes some oh, okay, time just to go. get out the seat. Okay, here you go. Bear with us. Here come the old man now. Um, also, we got, uh, Another member of the Cold Crush Brothers, Easy AD, is in the building. AD ain't old as us, so he's a little more. Yeah. <laughs> health conscious. He still look like a young man. I know he in his almost damn man. And um. <laughs> Last but not least, well, no, I ain't even gonna last because we got more people. The Almighty KG, legendary Cold Crush Brothers. The bass. And we want to give... So... Oh, theater. Okay, now, the only one else, the Grand Wizard. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Grand Wizard Theodore. The man in, invented the scratch. All the scratching you hear in hip hop, this is the man that invented it. All right, so before we move on, if you love hip hop, make some noise. I don't think you heard me. If you love hip hop, make some noise. All right, you about to go to school. Check. Roll, film. Now remember, this is the first hip hop movie ever so. created. One. Thank you. 
So this soundtrack was made especially for the movie. So these are all original cuts just made for the movie. I'm going to watch the movie, y'all. Yeah, we can't see what's going on, so. You done seen the movie 80 times. Well, we don't, well, we don't know if they're going to play the whole movie or nah, nah, they're, they're just going to play clips and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. All right. Because I, I ain't have my nap today, no. I don't think my kids ever seen it. So they looking at it. originally was supposed to be a, a graffiti documentary. It wasn't supposed to be. It didn't start off to be a hip-hop first movie. It was supposed to be a documentary about graffiti. But they had to bring the power in, so they brought us in to liven it up. So that's what, that's what I'm going with. Well, what I could tell y'all about the basketball scene is they can't. I'm gonna do it after this. Well, I'm a thief. I'll dog my face. I want to get you on the court. I beat Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase, a cutie to feed. You sell your soul to the devil to play like me. Well, I'm the R. Ruby D. And you got a lot of nerve when you play against me. You know you're going to get served. Cold Crush. JDL, the Lord, the Lord, and Ruby D, my man. Your shit is on the board. Your all can ball. Your all can ball. I'm the K. 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 And I'm not the fake. You know I eat your ass up. Like a steak could take. Cold Crush. You the R. I'm going to stick yo. The W. Whip a whip. And I'm here to say that I can rock your world like, like the Dr. J. Cold crush. Tony Tone know the be ill, but everybody know I could deal with the pill. I'm the D. Gotta rock on this shit court. Been nine years old. Rest in peace. Cold crush. A.D. Highest degree, I got a better jump shot than Rick Barry. Well, I'm the M. Like all the pretty girls, I serve your monkey ass like Earl the Pearl. Cold crush. Cold crush. Well, I'm not the cast or GMC. I'm gonna stick it on the board, man. Can't you see? We have to come to an agreement who's gonna survive. The queen. Cold crush fall. All the facets of the fight. Lisa Lee. Lee. Of the Zulu Nation. With the cold crush at their door. Well, I'm dog, and I'm dogging my face when I get, get you on the court. court. Be Charlie Chase. Chase. Well, I'm Charlie Chase. I'm always giving you more. You can't deal with me, Grand Wizard Theodore. Hey, Chad, my boy, what you gonna do? You gotta shoot the shot and do the do. Well, I'm the original Kev, and I'm on this court. I believe you know that. I'm the king of this sport. Say shoot, shoot, shoot. A fantastic is a romantic. Uh. Romantic is a fantastic. Yes, yes. The master Rob, I like the loop the loop I'm gonna take the ball right to the hoop. I shake and bake and then I rock you well, cause I am the man with all the clientele. Well, I'm Grandmaster Cat, just shooting my shot. I'm guaranteed to give you all the game I got. And if you try to rock me, I'll chop your face and just rock you all over the place. The cold crush. The cold crush. I'm the all, the all, the one who shot the ball. The creep of the crawl gets you off the wall. I'm so very glad that you thought you said something. That's why we're winning 18 to nothing. <laughs> Here she come. Yeah. So that that was in the park in the Bronx, um, 183rd off the Grand Concourse. Um, I'm remembering that that day they said, well, 
Say what you normally would say if you was out here playing. They didn't have no script for us to read or anything. So we, what you hear is what we made up on the spot. As far as, that's what I remember. Peace. Well, the whole movie was scriptless. You know what I mean? So basically, all they had was plots. They would come to us and say, well, we want y'all to do this in this scene. And we basically came up with, with everything you've seen in the movie. So, yeah, Tone, that's basically what happened. The basketball scene in Wild Style uh, was pretty much the standout, besides the performance scene at the Dixie, was the standout, well, and the finale at the amphitheater was one of the standout parts of the film, and it inspired a lot of things after that. It made the correlation between sports and hip-hop. The first time you saw the correlation on film where uh, if we didn't play sports, we did music. If we didn't do music, we played sports. They went hand in hand. And then you've seen a lot of examples of it since then. Uh, they, uh, Sprite uh, did a series of commercials based on the film Wild Style. So uh, one of the uh, commercials was the stoop rap between Rodney and uh, KK. One of them was the, uh, the, the, the basketball scene from Wild Style. They recreated it with Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan, myself, Prince Whipple Whip, and Missy Elliott. Okay, because that's just a testament to the power of the film and the longevity of the influence that it's had and continues to have. Well, you know, one of the greatest things also about the film, we was the first rap groups to go to Japan. And we went to Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. And we performed. And when we got there, nobody was wearing their hats like this or like this. But when we left, <laughs> everybody was wearing their clothes like that. So now if you go to Japan today, it'll look like you're in New York City. That's because of us. <laughs> well, you know, beyond the basketball, well, first of all, my name is Easy AD, and I'm from the legendary Cold Crush Brothers. Let's give a round of applause for that. Uh, what, what the movie Wild Style did for the culture and for the people who had no knowledge of what was going on in, in the Bronx at that time, it opened up a window and gave you a, uh, a little synopsis of what hip hop and the hip hop music and what was happening in the streets of the Bronx at that time. Because in the streets of the, in the Bronx at that time, the Bronx was going through a phase where there was, it was a lot of decadence, there was a lot of burning of the different communities because the landlords were not getting money from the city, so they burned the bu buildings down that we, current, we had lived in to get insurance money. So the, the movie Wild Style, you can see the, the, those images in the background. And the particular basketball scene was a basketball scene because a lot of us spent a lot of time either doing music or playing basketball. And I happen to be one of the people who played basketball really, really well. So that scene uh, was a scene um, due to the heart. So it, it, it influx music, something we love, basketball, and rhyming. And so that, would, that was the big thing about that basketball scene. And it was fun. Um, it was cold that day. Um, and we was, we was posed against the, um, our future ri rivals uh, in, the, in the culture of hip-hop, which was the fantastic five MCs with Grand Wizard Theodore. And so that was, that's very special. So when you do see this movie, or you want to share the movie with your young person, just let them know that this is a part of hip-hop that can never be replayed again, but it can be shared with the family. Now, the only thing I want to say is he talking about the South Bronx, not the whole Bronx, just the South Bronx was on exactly. fire. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that... Because that, that it, make people think the whole Bronx was toe up. It, that ain't wasn't the case. Yeah, what, Just the South Bronx, where we come from, was toe up. Well, for those of you who want demographics and visual aspects of it, we didn't know whether we were in the North Bronx, South... We, when we grew up, we were just doing music. And everything in this culture presently, now and day, has to be named. So we knew as we got older that it was the South Bronx. Thank you. So now y'all know. <laughs> now for me, as a, um, as a DJ, um, I actually got to score the whole movie Wild Style. So I can definitely honestly say that I was the first DJ to score a movie. And um, I didn't really know, I wouldn't say I didn't know what I was doing. I just didn't know that <laughs> what I was doing was going to be historic right. 
you know, just by, you know, putting the scratches on the music and, um, you know, uh, uh, helping make some of the music and stuff like that. And um, I really didn't know what was going to happen with Wild Style. I just knew that um, I was a part of something that was bigger than I am, you know, because hip hop is my life. When I wake up in the morning, I do hip hop. When I go to sleep, when I get up, everything that I did from when I wake up till I go to sleep was hip hop. And now I can honestly say today that, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of something that's, that's, that's bigger than I am. All right. Let me just add something real quick. I'm sorry to cut off your applause, I'm sorry. <laughs> but let me just add something about the basketball scene. Um, Charlie, Charlie, uh, Ahern, uh, the director of the film, he had definitive ideas about how he wanted to, to theme or plot the movie. But like Rodney said, there wasn't a lot of dialogue. The only people that had written dialogue was the few actors um, that played parts. The rest of us, we were just doing what we do, okay? We, we spoke how we spoke, we rhymed how we rhymed, we did what we did. Um, but Charlie's intent in the basketball scene was to kind of recreate the West Side Story um, thing with the, with the gangs versus the gangs and them coming together musically and battling it out musically. That's what the basketball scene was, was about. And uh, the Fantastic Five and our group, the Cold Crush Brothers, were actual rivals in hip hop at the time. So they played on that rivalry in the film as well. And I think that's why the basketball scene worked out the way it did without you even knowing the backstory. So that, that basketball scene was inspired by uh, West Side Story. I didn't, do, I didn't know that. <laughs> I ain't know that either. So Learn something new every day. <laughs> I, I don't think I even watched West Side Story, so of course I wouldn't know it. So. It's wild style, baby. <laughs> so, next clip. This is actually Theodore DJ. This is Busy B. Starsky. Tried to get him here today, but he couldn't make it, so. Mr. Rodney C. right here. I turn, turn it out, y'all. This was our hip-hop in 1980, 81. 
This is our hip hop. In the party, this is live. It will be a delight. Kaz, was that yeah. you that did that do, don't stop behind me? Huh? Was that you that did that don't stop behind me? No, that was me. I don't know. Huh? That was you, eh? Yeah, send me my check. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the mail. <laughs> so like I said, that was an actual live event, and they was just shooting while we was doing what we was doing at the time. Because people will hear that, and they'll think, that's a record. No, that was us live at the time. No cursing, very little cursing, but no cursing. And you can understand what people are saying, so. I think that was on like 2K, right? Yeah, that was the first performance um, in, the, in, the, in the film when we went to the Dixie and uh, Rodney and Busy just, just opened it up and just lit it up with that uh, uh, supposed battle <laughs> Talk about it, Rodney. Okay, well, it was a fictitious battle that Busy B was scheduled to win, so he actually won <laughs> that that battle. Um, but basically, it was a great opportunity to be a part of the first hip hop movie ever created. Woo! Yes. <laughs> well, you know that scene right there was was real special for all of us because it, it the scene was just it was just amazing and we just got on and did what we normally do now like like they said earlier earlier uh fantastic was our rivals and we 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 got on the stage and had some fun though that's what we really did at the end of the day but the dixie club actually is one of my favorite parts because i'm in it <laughs> no, but uh, it's actually one of my favorite parts because it just it just feel good. We actually to this day when we do live performances, we still use the Wild Style track, you know. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the Dixie Club. <laughs> well, well, every aspect of the Wild Style movie is historical. Um, first of all, we it's, it's it's historical for actually us to be sitting here this many years later talking about a movie that we were in when some of us was teenagers and some of us were a little bit older. So, I mean, Rodney C. and myself, we both went to the same junior high school. He's one year older than me. So he said he was younger than me. No, he's older than me. He was one grade up over me, okay? <laughs> and um, so me and Rodney, he was with, he was, we went to junior high school, 136, right off Boston Road. Right off Boston Road. And also, um, the Dixie Club was a place where we did a lot of hip hop shows at. You know, it was on a hill. Um, and it was a place where it, it was a place that you could probably call home for the culture of hip hop. It was like a place you go in, you feel good. Um, and the movie Wild Style is just a movie that brings you just like joy to understand that the culture of hip hop is not just about MCing. It's about all the elements of the culture of hip hop. That was excellent. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now we did go to school together. I am a year older than him. <laughs> But he acted like I forgot that. <laughs> but um, hip hop, well, wild style is significant because it opened the doors for everybody sitting on this stage today. Um, I do remember a time, uh, no, I don't even want to talk about that. But wild style is the greatest movie ever created. Let me say that. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. People ask me all the time about Wild Style. I tell them there's a couple of things that I always talk about when I speak about the film. Um, Wild Style is 40, 41, 40? It's 40. 40 years old, 40 years old since the film Wild Style was released. And every single year, at the end of the year, we get a check from Wild Style. Every individual that was in the film we gonna go there? I've gotten a check from one. Please don't talk about now, them checks. Now, hold on, hold on. It might be six dollars, <laughs> eighteen dollars. Every if you was on the soundtrack, maybe a few more dollars. 
but 27. But I mean, in fact, it's just a testament. It's just a testament to the longevity of the film itself. I mean, it's not even about the money, but the fact that, you know, Charlie from the jump took the time out to say that, all right, everybody is going to get a piece of this film for as long as this film exists, no matter how big or little a piece. And I don't see any other institutions, any film, record companies, or nothing that work that way. So salute to Charlie for that, okay? And secondly, the importance of the film Wild Style culturally and not only to the masses, but what it did for us as participants in the film. For me, it was just a stamp of approval. It was validation. It was someone from the outside sees what we doing and thinks it's valid. And that was the biggest takeaway for me from Wild Style. Of course, later on, it travels, the legacy of the film, and uh, the, 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 the longevity of it, of course, as well. But I think that's the, what I took away most from it, though. And them hey, hey, did, did he pay you? Did he pay you to say that? Because <laughs> Hank Cass. No, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> nah. nah. I'm only joking. And them but, $6 but, checks, but, right? But what, what, what we want to bring to y'all attention is everybody sitting up here was doing what they called hip hop, what they call in hip hop now before it was named. It wasn't called hip hop when we was doing it at first. So when people ask me, what is your best time in hip hop? I said, well, I was in it before it was being called hip hop. So I got a whole, we got a whole different outlook on the whole thing. So you see how live we were. We was live as kids. We was live with the music, our clean cuts on time from this guy. You know, he'll make you look bad if you ain't on your game. And I just want to give a shout out to the young man right here who wants to be a DJ. All right. All right. That, that comes that come from this, this right here. So he's one, he's 12? 12? Eight. 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 Wow. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, all right. Giving them four years. But he want to be a DJ. All so. right, so, so Tony Tone, you know that uh, one, of, one of my passions in life, even though I'm an adult male, I have to do adult things like pay rent, pay my cell phone bill, go shopping and buy food. But every day I wake up, I'm 10 years old inside of me. Um, I have to act like an adult because you know how adults, you're, you're judged. But inside of my heart, inside of my spirit, inside of my energy, I'm 10 years old. So um, DJ, come on up here. Then I say that around Puffy. Tony Tone. We, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Tony, we really don't need to don't bring... Don't mar the festivities, we, okay? We don't need to bring that energy into such a positive location. Sir? All right, so how you... Here, stand right here, sir. What's his name? What's his name? Um, I know how to do this. <laughs> um, how you doing? What's your name? My name is Octavian Augustus, but I like to be called O.C. All right, let's call him D.C. Say, what's up, D.C.? Everyone say, what's DJ up, D.C.? DJ O.C. Say, what's up, DJ O.C.? What's up, DJ OC? All right, so DJ OC, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a gift, all right? So this is a gift card for $50, oh. and it's sponsored by, I'm going to spell it, it's H-A-V-E-N, Hot Chicken, all right? I just want to, listen, you can say it out loud. Say it out loud. Mucho caliente, all right? And here's a hat for you to wear, and... um. Where's the guy with the camera? Come over here. I'm going to stand up. Can you come over here, please? We're going to hang out with him today. Yeah, dinner's on you, homie. You get to keep the hat, so, so this is happening in real time. This wasn't planned, as far as I know. This is happening in real time. <laughs> All right, y'all. Give him another round of applause, the next DJ generation, DJ OC. Oh, oh. he's okay. Where the lawyer at? Sponsor. Oh, that wasn't your fault. That was me. But I'm glad you ain't fall, because I ain't got no money. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this and is Tony, our hip hop. Tony, Tony, just making stuff happen. So, Tony, I just want to add this. One of the things that we need to just really kind of reflect on, I know, is that. It was, hip hop was created by young people, right? The young generation, that means that we were in a space where we wanted to do something creative beyond 
our oldest brothers and sisters and just be, we wanted to be ourselves. We wanted to create a path in the world ourselves. We was being free. Um, it was great to be free at that time. There was no limitations on what we could do. We can go outside, plug um, uh, our sound system into light poles. There were no, we didn't have to get police permits. We didn't have to get sound permits. We just bring our stuff out in the parks at that particular time and play the music. And on top of that, the people loved the music. And so that's out of, out of all those wonderful things that we did, it was a youth driven movement. So give it up for the DJ one more time. All right. So OC, you the reason why we do all we do. You know what I mean? Because you love what we do. Now, hip hop was born out of a desire to be a part of something that we couldn't be as teenagers, and that was disco. Disco was 21 for young ladies and 23 for young men. So if you was younger than that, you couldn't go to a club. So where did we go? We went in the parks. So that's how hip hop started, by young people. And it was just a desire to be a part of something that we couldn't. Now we got disco tracks that we love in hip hop, but we also got hip hop tracks that's not disco. You know what I mean? So basically what we did was we bridged the gap between disco and hip hop. Um, and unfortunately, hip hop kicked disco out the door. Sorry to hear that. Because they only had a 10 year run, but they did have a 10 year run. We celebrating 50 years of this thing. Y'all yeah. give it up for him. Yep. Yes, sir. Next clip, please. You know that. from the ranch don't take no job. There's a, there's a little kid in the back with the green shirt on and break dancing. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> oh, he's a little shy. She or he is shy. They How old is he? Four? Wow, wow. All right. All right. Show him some love. <laughs> I want to say this. I want to say, um, I want to give a big uh, thank. For, uh, for, uh, first of all, I want to say, um, 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 Queen Nene, can you stand up? Uh, She's been a part of 
part of us for yes. a long time. And I want to say, um, uh, I'm going to say hello to um, two of uh, my favorite people in the world. Um, Onyx and Miss King, please stand up. That's Tony's son and daughter. Yes. My b the best part of me right there, both of them. <laughs> Thank you. I want to shout out Lil Pookie from around the block. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop being a jokester. <laughs> but you know, I, you know what? Uh, no, Check this out. out. We didn't. We didn't get to our part yet. Yeah. No. All no. Right, next clip. Uh, the Dixie Cold Crush Brothers. If you could jump. All right. That's me and my crew. Crazy. We we won the battle, but we lost the war. Rest in peace, that a rock. That a rock. One of the first Puerto Rican MCs. Puerto Rican. By the way, I'm speaking. Another Puerto Rican MC. Cause I've lost my mind. You see me over here, I'm 
Right now, y'all get ready. That's me on the turntables. Okay, fade it out. Oh no, no, no. Let Cass go. I don't wanna get I don't wanna get penalized. Let Cass go. What? Let it go. Let it keep going. Show love a man. She said, baby, come on over as quick as you can. I said, I can't come now. Someone's coming to get me. Then she said, I'm all alone and nobody with me. Thought for a second, oh, shit, she's alone. And I was knocking at her door before she hung up the phone. She let me in the house and gave me a kiss. She said, give me that thing that you know I miss. So we went into a room and we got high, but she couldn't keep her hand from all my flies. So I made her lock the door and went to check it. When I came back in, the girl was naked. That was my cue to do the do. I took my clothes off and started on the pool while I was here. It up. Then about a quarter to three, she said, Cass, somebody's coming. I said, yeah, me. Then the door bus opened. There was the folks. I thought, damn, they could have waited. Say, damn, they could have waited. Say, damn, they could have waited till I finished my stroke. A mother was a shock. A father reached on the shelf and pulled down the 45. I almost hit I said, please don't shoot. And pleaded my case. And you'd have done the same thing if you was in my place. But if you spared my life, believe me, friend, you'll never see me around your daughter again. Well, don't ask me why, but he let me leave. I ran 37 blocks till I stopped to breathe. Gave thanks to God. He wasn't too upset. And went home and thought about poor event. Now re yep. remember, this is 80. This is 80. This is 80. And, and we are kids writing our own rhymes. This is our life. Nobody checking our rhymes, whether we were spelling stuff right or not. You know, we was doing what we did as kids. Um, we're going to stop it there just to take some questions. If y'all have any questions. Nobody? Okay. Hey, man. Yeah, don't be shy. <laughs> yeah.
thank you all for coming. It's just an experience to be here with you guys, with the music that we grew up with, right? Thank you. Yes, um, thank you. Thank the Westport Library for having us. Well, I, what's most remarkable is your, the way you all speak compared to the artists of today, the, the way you enunciate and pronounce your words, and that's, that's been lost. And I don't know why or where it got lost, but it is lost. So we have to kind of try to get that back. My question was, where was the amphitheater? What block was the amphitheater on? Because that's one part of hip hop history that I don't have. The amphitheater was on the Lower East Side uh, along the FDR Drive. Um, how, how, like, what's the stop? What was the stop? Near Houston. Houston, Houston, Houston yeah. yeah. Houston and Delancey? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, on the West Side. It's not there anymore. Yeah, they knocked, yeah, they it. Just knocked it down. Last year, two years ago? Yo, they spent $3 million doing it over and then knocked it down. That's crazy. Yeah, because I remember we did a Wild Style anniversary. One, I think the 25th, was it? 30th? 35th, 35th, 35th at the, at the uh, amphitheater. So that was the last performance there. Any further, any more questions? All right, we have one in the front. If, if you could, there it is. If you come up here and ask it on the microphone so we can hear you. Get it on camera. Just line up here. One of the one of the funny stories about the uh, over there. One of the real quick. One of the funny stories about the amphitheater is that um, the uh, when we was filming, the police came down and asked Charlie Ahern, um, "You guys got a permit? Uh, you guys got a sound permit?" And Charlie was like, "Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a sound permit. Uh, it's in the van. It's in the car. Uh, you know." So it was it was really really funny the way. Hold up, hold up, Theodore. <laughs> Cass could do Charlie. <laughs> Officer, we have a permit. It's in the car. Uh, I think Freddie, Freddie will probably have that for us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's true. The cops really did come. <laughs> No, we didn't have no permit. <laughs> Nowhere. We didn't have a permit anywhere. When we shot the basketball scene up in the park, that was the park that we play basketball in every day. Around Right after rehearsal, we go in the park, we play basketball. So Charlie, we took Charlie to the places where we, we, we hung out and did things, and that's why all of the scenes were shot in our neighborhoods and in the places that we frequented and the places that we went to. We, we were basically the... The uh, uh, what, uh, what, what, the casting as far as the yeah, casting. Lo we told them where to shoot at. Location, shoot location, direction. where location. Well, the final scene of the movie was inspired by the funky. Charlie A and Fat Five Freddy and Busy B came up to the valley, and in the valley they got a a small amphitheater. Mm -hmm. So he saw us, and we was performing on that amphitheater. And I guess when he decided that he wanted to do this movie, that he was going to have that as the finale. So we ended up going to a bigger amphitheater, but it just wasn't in the hood. That's all. All right, thank you, All right, Rodney so Steve. we got questions yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm really fascinated in general how bands create songs from nothing, but you guys created an entire genre from nothing. So I'm really curious of your stories of the creative process of how you create a genre from nothing. Well, you know what? I'm going to be the curator for this. All right, Tony Tone, you can take that question. Well, <laughs> is, is that like I'm the oldest up here or something? No, no like, let, let, me, let me be clear on this. It's, no. not, it's not to you, you're the oldest. It, the way you articulate stories is very, very potent, pertinent. So please, please shoot. Well, I'm going to try to keep it short. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it short. I'm, I'm just going to go to a gift from God. God gave us a gift, and, and he walked us through it. He was there with us, because every place we went, we went to somebody else's hood, and we had to make it back home to our hood. It wasn't easy doing it. Um, we wasn't in Hollywood. We wasn't in bright lights and all that. We was in some dark areas every time we went someplace. Even coming up to Bridgeport, Connecticut, it's like, you got to make it back home. So I credit it all to God and this man right here. Okay, hold on. He, he's give, the greatest. He's the greatest lyricist give, ever. Give Tony Tony a round of applause for that. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to move along now. I know you go by the name of Grandmaster Cass, but we're going to call 
<laughs> Who's moderating this panel right here? <laughs> We're going to bring the microphone so, over to so, Grandmaster so, Casanova Fly, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Sir, I just wanted to answer your question, um, uh, uh, my version. Um, and you, you're saying, how, to, how did we build this culture from nothing? We didn't build it from nothing. We stand on the shoulders of, of pioneers in every genre of hip hop, from dancers to DJs to uh, rappers, MCs, singers, songwriters, producers, and all of that. I always say hip hop didn't invent anything, but hip hop reinvented everything. So everything that exists in hip hop existed prior to. It's just our generation's reinvention of those different elements, okay? Our reinvention of the dance, break dancing. Okay, our reinvention of how you play music, DJing, our reinvention of, of singing and song through rap, okay, and the art, the graffiti. So we reinvented all of those art forms that already existed. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. I just want to say I wore this tape out in the 90s. So. My friends were really into boom bap. They're really into Big L. They're really into Fat Beats, the whole record shopping backpacker era. But this movie was my personal favorite. And uh, I asked you gentlemen a couple questions in the green room. Are you friends with Char Patty Astor? And you said yes, and that's very nice. But, uh, and I asked uh, Theodore, about the two versions of the soundtrack, the one with the cuts and the one with just the band without the cuts. I love those two records. And uh, I have a question. Um, has Charlie Ahern gotten this on Netflix? Mm. No, not on okay. Netflix. No, nah, no, we would have known. We would have known. And I don't know got more than $8 in that last year. Y'all don't know that it was on Netflix? <laughs> if so it was on Netflix. So it's not. Y'all don't know. Wild Style was on Netflix. No. No, it was on Netflix for over a year. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. Really? In the early? Like, no. Must have been Re when Netflix started. Recently. <laughs> recently, within the last two, three years, Wild Style was on Netflix for over a year. Wow. Y'all ain't They're get not, your checks? Nah. Nah. Uh -uh. nah. I got mine. No, well, no. I mean, I, if I got the check, I didn't know it was from Netflix. I got right. mine, because I called them and told them to send it to me. <laughs> So, so I know. it's everywhere. It? It's on Prime too. It's everywhere now. It's on Hulu. Yeah. It's everywhere now. Where's my lawyer at? That's what I'm talking Dave, about. Dave, call my lawyer. My lawyer. All right, gentlemen, let's stay let's on track. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, sir. State your name and your affiliation, please. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, it's my second favorite movie. Style Wars is my or Wild Style Style Wars. Maybe they're hand in hand. Anywho. How tied in were you guys with those old school subway graffiti writers? Like, did you know them, or is it well, like well, some of us was graffiti writers okay. also. So okay, I wrote. We are all, I, 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 we are all <laughs> graffiti artists. <laughs> no. Yo, shut the fuck up, Chico man. <laughs> I paid three of those murals for some of that ass. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. He knows the yeah, film. Yeah. He knows the film. But Tone, um, Tone can really talk about the graffiti aspect, though. It's one thing about this culture. Um, you got to be very careful. Um, you will junkie up on any one of these elements. And as a, graffiti, as a graffiti writer, I was a junkie for writing. I used to get the shakes. Uh, my mother allowed me to write in my room to get it out of my system. Um, my sound system, I probably could fill half this room with all the equipment I got right now. So you would junkie up on something easy if you really get into it. Yeah. Um, sometimes I get to shake when, and I have to write. I have to draw something because it's still in my system. So yeah. Graffiti writers, on, on, we know all the greats, and all the greats know us. Well, um, actually, we have another question over there, right? Yeah, before that question, I just want to say one thing about graffiti. That's my daughter, man. Yeah, I'm going to let her get a question out. Um, most people don't actually realize that graffiti was its own entity. 
Yeah. Right? And graffiti artists, before hip-hop, didn't want to have nothing to do with us. But because we liked their artwork, we got them to do our flyers. So the ones who started doing flyers, that's how you see the graffiti into hip-hop. But all of the graffiti artists wasn't into it, and all of them will tell you, well, the ones who were before it will definitely tell you they ain't want to have nothing to do with hip-hop. So yeah, we but I wrote, say, and Cool Herc wrote, and... No, I'm not saying yeah. that you didn't write. What I'm saying is the real, the people who did it before hip-hop. You get what I'm saying? Like, Dondi and all of them, who was doing graffiti, they wasn't into... Because it wasn't exist. It didn't exist yet, right? So by us... Right, they just wrote, and then we liked it and said, yo, we want that. Out of, out of all the elements of, of hip-hop, graffiti has been around the longest, and it's the oldest. And like you said, it was a, a, a culture unto itself. It's just that the hip-hop generation adopted that culture as well. That's right. And if you look at the early DJs, the early MCs, or the early B, a lot of them were writers as well. They did graph, and then they danced too, or they, or they did graph, and they, they DJed as well. So that's how, you know, graffiti kind of eased its way into the culture and became one of the elements of the culture because that's the right. culture practiced that element. And to answer your question, sir, yeah, we were, some of us knew some of the graffiti artists. All right, say so your name, who your father is. So, uh, <laughs> your name and your question, please. And how you got here. All right, my name is Imani, and Tony's my father. Just want to say I'm very proud of my father and all my uncles out there. Um, grew up around, obviously, hip-hop and hearing all, them, all their stories and seeing them perform. It's been very inspiring. Um, so I guess, oh, and what he said earlier, all his records, all his equipment could fill up, like, probably this whole building. Like, it's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I guess my question, like, when did y'all really feel the impact of what y'all created? Well, like I said, we was doing it at the very, very beginning. We are the impact. Y'all didn't hear that. We are the impact. Because there was nothing to feel until we brought it to life. Like I said, this guy is the greatest with the pen and the paper. What's your book? Lyrics? Yeah, uh, written. Written. So he has a book in here someplace that he's selling called Written. And um, guys like Big Daddy Kane, um, Will Smith, all of them look up to, the, they, they look up to all of us, but they actually look up to him. And we get looked up to because of him, one of the greatest. But enough about me. <laughs> so, Imani, you, your question was, when was the impact? So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to address that. I think the, the impact for me, it, it felt when every day um, I walked outside of my building and people recognized me uh, for what, was, what I was doing in the community. Every time I went to school, um, people recognized, knew your name and who you were. Every time you walked on a basketball court, people would say, is that easy AD? Can he play basketball? And I would say, you'll see. Every time I went a place that, no, that you thought no one knew you, the impact that was laid down by hip-hop and, 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 my, and our, all of us, right? Because hip-hop wasn't created by one individual. All of us had a contribution in the culture. So the impact was community, being visible in your community, being seen, being heard, and being felt by the people that you love the most. Yep. All right. For uh, me, uh, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me answer my niece's question as well. Um, I think one of the most impactful things that happened because when you're, when you're in the process of doing something, you're on the inside of it. You're not on the outside looking in. So you're in the process of, of creating it. So you don't stop to label it or to see what's this or what's that. You're, you're the one doing it. But if, if I had to look outside of myself at some of the things that happened in hip hop that let me know, oh, this is real and this is going to move, in 1979, there was a slew of records that came out all trying to, you know, accommodate this new music coming out of the street. And when Rapper's Delight 
uh, by the Sugar Hill Gang came out and the impact that it had on the masses, that was one of the first indications that I knew that this, this is going, this is going uh, around the world. And then the second one was when Wild Style came out. That was like the validation, the stamp of approval that let me know the world is about to be aware of what's going on here. All right, I got two for you. Uh, the first one is when we recorded our first record and I heard it on the radio. The first time I heard me on the radio, I was like, wow. The other time was when I left the Funky and started Double Trouble, my DJ Stevie Steve, he had two sons at the time. One was like three and the other one was like five. And they would watch me and KK practice, right? And when we would put the mics down, they would pick up the mics and do our routines. Wow. I knew then that hip hop was here to stay. Yes, yes. And for me, for me, I realize the impact is when, as a DJ, being able to get on the airplane, traveling all over the world, and people know who I am, no matter where I go. I can go to Alaska, I can go to Australia, uh, 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 Malaysia, um, anywhere in the world I went, people actually knew who I was. And that was definitely an a, 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 a impact for me. And scoring the, scoring the movie Wild Style, just sitting in and putting music to all the scenes, not knowing that I was the first DJ to score the movie. So that that's definitely was an impact for me. Thank you for that question. Do we have any more questions? Yes. Madam Mazel? What's your name and where you from and My name is how you Tanya. got here and everything? <laughs> My name is Tanya. I was born and raised in the Bronx. Oh, cool. Um, I'd like to say to you guys, thank you. Because you saved a lot of lives back then. Because let me tell you something. It was really rough with the dope and it was really heavy. And when y'all came along, y'all gave the kids something to do. And a lot of the kids didn't make it, but a lot did because of y'all. And I like to say thank you, because um, we had... <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. We had the parties that we used to go to in them abandoned buildings. Remember that? Remember the abandoned buildings? And that was the start. And that's how we started from the abandoned buildings, and y'all wrote your way up, and I'm so proud of y'all. And I'll say thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mama, thank you, thank you for your, 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 your response, but let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Where was that abandoned building that you partied in? <laughs> Rodney. Mm, like over there on Webster Avenue and stuff like that. You okay. Know, you the know. best party I DJ for was in, was in Harlem, 110th Street. That's right. And the center was called Somebody Center. I ran a cord from the street light into the building. It was one light in the building. That's right. And, and they, we party hard in that building. I hear you. I just ain't never been to one. Oh, you missed out. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. You missed out. But thank you. Yes. Do we well, have any more this? questions? Oh, you, you know what? Okay, I, I want to okay. say something about the impact to uh, Tony's wonderful, beautiful daughter. You know, one night, because we practiced really hard, the cold crust. We, I remember one year we practiced from 12 in the afternoon to 12 in the morning. It was like almost every day. And um, I remember one night I had went home, and I was sleeping, and I had a dream that we were performing in Madison Square Garden, and um, there was no black people in the crowd, excuse me, but there was none. There was a whole white crowd. So I came back to practice, and I told Cass and the crew, I said, yo, we got to do this record called Punk Rock Rap. And they all looked at me like, what? Uh, so, some of them looked, and not AD, but some of them looked, and, uh, and we said, okay, and Cass pulled out the pen, you know, <laughs> and started writing. And we did this record called Punk Rock Rap. Now, it was on the radio, like on BLS for a little while, but they didn't know what to do with it. Now, keep in mind, this is what, two, three years before Run DMC. Like, this is, this, we, we made the first rock and roll rap record. But a lot of people don't know that. That's a little bit of history. <laughs> and that's when I knew it was gonna impact the world. And listen, and further, 
we were the first independent record label picked up by CBS Records. CBS picked us up for the song Punk Rock Rap, but they had never seen us. They thought we were a white group. And, so and when they found out we was a hip hop group, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to market us or whatever. So th they dropped the distribution and we went back to profile. I mean, not, not, not for that song, but they do dropped the distribution. But historically, um, had they had a marketing plan, the way they do for these artists today, um, punk rock rap would have went platinum, you know what I mean? Videos and all that stuff. The sad thing was back then they didn't know no record company knew how to market hip -hop, or promote yeah. hip hop. Right. So my first, con I got a contract with Capital EMI. The contract was 69 pages. It took six months to negotiate and they wanted rights for the universe. Meaning they already know they're going to be selling music in on the moon. Perpetuity. And, and all of that. Yeah. That's, yeah. 69 yeah, pages, gonna... and it took six months to negotiate. We have another question? Yeah, I kind of wanted to just second what the woman said before. Um, I'm, a, well, I'm a retired New York City public high school teacher, and I taught at a school called Westside High. Let's give her a round of applause and, for that. Uh, thank you. It's alternative school, and um, a lot of my students were involved in this... Uh, culture and um, you know very very early on I was I was teaching and uh, I had um, one of my colleagues was in the Rocksteady crew and another who uh, he's now he's became a colleague but he was a kid then and another one of my wonderful students his name was Kurt 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 work is what he called himself and uh, you know he grew up uh, he was abandoned by his uh, by his family, his father was killed in a fight, and he was the father was trying to break up a fight, and he was shot. And the kid basically holed up in an abandoned building in the Bronx, and then he was brought um, taken in by another family. Um, and he was just this incredible, talented guy, and he was doing graffiti, and he was also rapping. And uh, you know, so I was sort of in on that very early on, and it was just such a lifesaver for so many kids and. You know, I, I feel like I was sort of in on the ground floor because the kids were doing the beatboxing on the desks, you know, in the classroom and stuff, and they did a graffiti on the walls as a, a kind of decoration for the classroom. And so I, I just want to thank you. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We always want to thank the uh, teachers. They do not get paid enough. We got That's one more sure. question. Okay. Yeah, first of all, respect to all of y'all up there. Thank you. Um, I had the um, pleasure, I think back in the 80s, can't remember exactly what year, but we did a, um, a little performance down at uh, Harlem World for Grand Wizard Theodore and the Fantastic Five, one of their anniversaries. And I'd just like to know whatever happened to the Harlem World uh, Club. Well, I drove past it uh, two days ago. It's a uh, preschool now. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, it went from Hollow World to being uh, Conway supermarket, and now it's a it's a daycare um, school now. Um, I'm saying we should have oh, the community should have got together and bought it and um, kept it as what it was because it, it's one of the monuments of hip hop. Yeah, AD was saying it, it's it's a preschool yeah. and an elementary school. Like half of it's elementary, half is free. But it's it's been so many things since it's been Harlem World. Okay, the the heyday of Harlem World was uh, the 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 early to mid '80s, pretty much. And uh, yeah, Fat Jack and all those cast of Harlem World crew. And uh, you you know you know the deal. You was in there, all right. But yeah, that's basically what happened. Oh shit. It's done. And so, yeah. what, what he, Harlem World was a, was a um, Harlem World was a um, entertainment complex located on 116th, 116th Street and Lenox Avenue. So, when Harlem World opened up, um, there was a, a backlash in the community because the Sebastian Center was right across the street, and they were against having a entertainment complex in the community on 116th Street. So, even in the midst of the culture of hip hop. We always have to fight for our music and a place for our music and a place for where we want to do music, even back then. So I know a lot of things we saying, y'all don't know what it is, like the community, KG said community in his rhyme. Community back then was a car service, like Uber. 
<laughs> so <laughs> right, luxury. AD just said something about the mosque being across the street. Mosque is a, a Muslim temple, so you know, just some things. So clarity. Yeah. So um, we're going to go to the next stage, um, which is performance. Y'all want to see something? Ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, what y'all running up on? Security, security. Hey, listen, before we do our performance uh, or what we're yeah. going to do, we have mobilias in the back. Uh, listen, I know tomorrow is a big day, as you all know, right? The, the eclipse, right? So, Cass has mobilias in the back. I have mobilias in the back with the I am on it, which is the most powerful word in the universe. So, when we finish here, please go support. And uh, yeah, they're great shirts and they're great products. Um, yeah, by mobilia, he means memorabilia. Oh, memorabilia. <laughs> Memorabilia. Excuse we got me. merch. Right. We got merch. We got go buy some stuff. <laughs> we got merch. We got merch. All right. Oh. All right. I I hope y'all enjoying what we um sharing with y'all. Right now we're gonna we're gonna start off. With the mister, Little Rodney C, going to do a short thing for your pleasure. One, two, one, two. Can y'all turn number six up a little bit? Because I don't want to work too hard. Huh? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, it'll come through. Got turn number four up. So, we missed the call. Turn number four up. So this is the type of stuff we used to do when we was kids to make things work for us. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah. We did. Y'all didn't. We did. Yeah, did no, DJs. no. You remember when we ain't had no microphones? We used to rap through the headphones. Yeah, we used to. Into the yeah. mic jack. And they were the, the white headphones from the school. We used to take no. them from the school. Number four is not loud enough. And we also used to steal the erasers, the, the blackboard erasers, and we would make our own magic markers with them as graffiti artists as well. Um, two, we used one, to use two. the magic Let's markers. Turn this mic up right here. One, two, one, two. It ain't gonna work. Okay. I got you, I got you. I turn it up. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you're gonna dig this. <laughs> Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Hey, yo, Theodore, cut that. You just gotta drop a beat for me and I'll just go, I, I gotta go Acapulco. Cause this ain't, yeah, I can't even do that. Uh, I can't cheat the people. <laughs> All right, now before I start my show, is one thing I want to know. Y'all ready to party? I don't think y'all heard me. Y'all ready to party? Okay. Somebody say yeah. Say oh yeah. Say we came to the party. Say it. All right. You ready, Theodore? Okay. It don't matter. To be real, anything. You know, just, just give me something. I'll drop you, I'll hit y'all with a little hot 16. I like my picture being taken. It don't happen much no more. I got to get all this. Give me all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got to get that too. I got this too. All right. So, you're now listening to the voice of Rodney C. One half of the original Double Trouble, featured in the first hip hop breakdance and graffiti movie ever created, and it was called Wild Style. Considered the Bible of hip hop, and it opened the doors for all the movies and things going on today. In addition to that, I'm also formerly of the Funky Four, plus one more, and the Funky Four plus one. We were the very first hip hop group from the Bronx, New York, to get a legitimate record deal. We were the very first hip hop group with a female. 
Her name is Shah Rock, and she's one of the first females of hip hop. And we were the very first hip hop group to do national television. We did Saturday Night Live with Deborah Harry on Valentine's Day, 1981. Okay. Y'all can give it up. You ready? One, two, three. Okay, James five, Brown. Two. All right. Check it. Y'all ready to party? Y'all ready to party? Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Somebody say oh yeah. Say oh yeah. Say we came to party. Say it. I can't hear you. We came to party. Say it. Somebody say ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. The ladies, all the ladies in the house say ow, say ow, say ow, ow, say ow, ow, now ow, 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 say ow, 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 young ladies scream. Homeboys, make some noise, let me hear you say ho. on the stage. I'm solo. I'm so y'all got me solo. I need my cold crush brothers up here. All right, but my name is Grandmaster Kaz. I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx, New York City. Born and raised. All right, uh, April 18th, I'll be celebrating a birthday in the Bronx. Don't worry about how old I'm gonna be. Now I'll be 64 uh, this, this April 18th. I know, I look good. But, uh, I mean, hip-hop keep me young. Hip-hop kept me here. 
Hip-hop is my saving grace. Hip-hop is my savior. Hip-hop is the reason. Well, one of the main reasons that I wake up every day and have something to look forward to. I love my wife. <laughs> my kids is all right. All but right. this hip-hop thing, <laughs> ain't nothing like it. I'm telling you. These are my legendary Cold Crush brothers. Make some noise. Give it up. Yeah. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. We're going to give you a taste of what we used to do. Yeah. You know, and actually, what we still do. <laughs> Let me get a check, check, check. So, um, when you think hip hop or, or rap, when you think rap music, you think records, you think, you know, songs, collaborations. And, but we been doing hip hop, like Tony said, before it was named hip hop. For before, sure. Be six years before the first rap song came out That's is when hip hop started. And some say even longer. So, the things that built up to records are what we're about to show you right now, all right? What's missing in hip hop is the collective, the groups, all right? There hasn't been a hot group in hip hop since the Wu-Tang Clan, all right? But prior to that, in the early days, like Rodney said, there was the Funky Four, there was the Furious Five, there was the Treacherous Three, there was the Disco Four, the Hypnotizing Five, the This and That Six, and the Crash Crew, and so many different crews, and Showmanship was more part of hip hop, okay? And the Cold Crush Brothers, not to pat ourselves on the back, but we're known as some of the greatest showmen in hip hop. We weren't popular for records, we were popular for our show. Yeah. Okay. Check one, two. Big part of that show was the melodies and the harmonies that we used to do, which is long missing, and you don't hear a lot in hip hop anymore. A lot of those harmonies come from our, our education, our growing up, our musicality um, as kids. Um, we only had one radio station. It wasn't a black radio station and a disc radio station, and a, no, it was one station. So we heard the Jackson Five. Yeah. And then we heard the Osmond Brothers. And we heard Barry White. And then we heard Barry Manilow. Yeah. Okay. And we heard Elton John and Three Dog Night and, and Queen and, and so many other um, artists that led to our musical impression. So when you listen to the Cold Crush Brothers, yeah. You hear a little bit of everything. Yeah, the yard birds, All right. you hear a little bit of everything. Well, I like to say, when you listen to the Cold Crush Brothers, you hear the world. So, with that being said, don't sit all alone just crying the blues. Because you're nothing but a winner when, when you chew the cold crush, 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 the cold crush. Yeah, yeah. Stick around if you're not in a rush, and guess what? We no disrespect, it's time we put you in check, 82. Could you turn up the microphone? It's not that we're conceited, it's just that we defeated all of you. And I'm talking about you, and you, and you, and you. And Why you want to be around us? Then you want to front and down us with your silly game. to let you know that the 
That's how it was back in the days, and still is. We still doing shows. Um, we still sharing our hip hop with the old and the young. And um, right now, we'll give Theodore a little time to get set up to do his little thing, um, his thing. But um, any more questions? Right quick. We got a short, we got a little more time. Um, Thank y'all for coming out today um, and being a part of the virtual fest here at the Westport Library. We got t-shirts back there. We got some CDs um, from back in the 80s. If y'all want some, some Furious Five CDs, some Cold Crust CDs. Um, but um, like I said, Theodore is the person that invented the scratch in hip hop, so he's gonna do a little showcase right now. You just saw the legendary Cold Crush Brothers do a little impromptu um, just to share our hip hop with you. Uh, hey, we got B More in the house. Stand up, B More. You know, I'm going to put you on the scene. 
female MC right now. She doing her thing right now. Um, it's been a long time, 50 years of hip hop, the culture of hip hop, five elements, DJ, MC, graffiti, B-boys, and the fifth element is knowledge, knowledge of self. Each one teach one, and if you ain't teaching, you ain't actually doing hip hop. I'm ready. So. One, one, one. You good? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so he's ready. <laughs> Brand was the Theodore getting ill. If the bigger brand was the Theodore getting ill. If the bigger brand was the Theodore getting ill. If the bigger brand was the Theodore getting ill. If the bigger brand was the Theodore getting ill. around like ready to go too.
Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, you can go back down. I just wanted him to get a close up look at what Graham was and was doing. So, to the person that don't, uh, like, can't even think about what's going on, it's like six to eight different things that's going on all at the same time. He's working like the ears here, one ear is here and one ear is to the monitor. He's got to put a certain amount of pressure on the platform while controlling the tempo to stay in pocket with the music. So it's just so much stuff that's going on in the DJ world while he's playing. And then when you got MCs, they, you got to blend together. The tempo, everybody got to be on tempo on time, yep. and they got to work as one. So it might look easy, but it's not. So I think that's our time. Next year? Yeah. Next year? So y'all got to write the Westport Library and tell them this was good and you want it back. Yes. Well, I just want to say thank you to each and every one for coming out today, um, especially to Tony Crush for inviting me to co-host with him this evening. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something. And don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend to come to the next one. Again, do your homework. Try to front and get ripped from your ear to your shit up. Go and put it on harder than anyone did. It would benefit you to keep a wide open lid. Make a show shot shake. Make it sure you shine. Shake your shows for sure. Take your hearts and time. Do it all for the rhyme and the rhythm and things. When we do it, we bang it like we inside the bank. Ain't doubting nobody when we inside the gym. But I'm proud of all. And I know who I'm. Constellation gets brighter, this right to 